Okay, welcome folks. Uh, you back here with John Suglidis. We've got an, a really amazing guest from South Africa, Wendy Glenda Shuttleworth. Hi Wendy, how are you? I'm good, thanks for you, John. Fantastic. Uh, so happy that you can join us. Um, we're streaming live on, on both radio stations. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Wendy, um, you, there's a lot that you do. I, I read briefly, um, I looked at your website, which I have put on both uh, radio stations. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. When did your journey start? Um, let's take it to where it got you to, um, where you are at this present moment, what's happening. Let's let's look at all of that. So if we could start from the beginning, please. The beginning has to be when I was born, I suppose. Hey? That's a good place to start. Yeah. <laughs> or, or my previous lives. How far back must we go? Um, um, uh, where your journey started, how, how you got into the spiritual work. Um, because obviously you do see a lot. You, you do a lot of counseling. You do relationship counseling. Um, you do the coaching. You do body talking. So, yeah, wh where your journey started, how you got involved, and where it uh, transformed and where you are now and where you're going and what, you, what your workshops, your upcoming workshops are going to be about. And if it's locally here in, in South Africa um, or, you know, is it um, abroad, yeah. if we can touch on that. Yeah, please. No, that's great. I think it all started when I was a child, John. Um, I was born and, you know, I saw different things to other children and I always wondered why they didn't see what I saw. You know, and I heard voices and I wondered why people acted in certain behaviors. And it was interesting for me to link the way people acted and why they got into certain games and patterns in life. And later when I studied HR, human resources and psychology and, you know, chakra balancing and all sorts of other stuff like that, it, it kind of confirmed a lot of what I had seen as a child. Yeah. So I think, uh, it, you always have to go back to your childhood where things start. Yeah, yeah. And, Don't want to go further back. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, obviously, it must have been quite, a, quite a, quite a strange experience to experience things. And did you have people that you could talk to? Um, I did have my mother, who was quite spiritual. Uh, she was a very special person. Yeah. And I could talk to her. But a lot of, a lot of people, put, you know, think you're crazy when you're young and you see auras and energies and spirits and guides and things like that. Mm -hmm. They think you're completely crazy. Mm. Um, so, you know, I think it's a challenge growing up like that. But the challenging part is to not block it off completely. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's a very interesting one because normally you find when I counsel, um, uh, uh, you know, children or counsel the, the parents, you, you tend to get this, um, uh, you know, my, I've got to get my child out of uh, seeing things, experiencing things because it's airy fairy. But um, that's definitely the wrong way to go. Would and you then say? when they get to about their twenties, suddenly they want to get back in touch with, it. Yeah. or later maybe in their life, suddenly they want to they want to be able to see these things. Yeah. And I think they they regret so much that they were told to switch it off. Yeah. Yeah. Especially I've, especially in the in the day and age that we are in. Um, I mean, the, the amazing children that are coming through now, the gifts that they bring to society. So it's, it's definitely something not to to um, discard or, or suppress, would you say? Uh, definitely. I try to explain life to myself in, in the way of sort of as a puzzle. And I actually wrote a book called Your Soul Puzzle, where... There's good and bad in everybody, if you want to call it good and mm. bad. Black and white, different things that are um, appropriate or inappropriate to you. Yeah. And we've all got anger and different emotions inside us. And those are referred to as black. And then the light and the love as white. Mm. And how a puzzle has many different colors, but that you need the different colors to make the picture complete. Mm. And that if you try and be all good and holier than thou, and only, you know, white and only light, the puzzle, the, the puzzle isn't complete. And it tends to come out in an appropriate way then. You know, and, and you have the ministers doing stupid things to children and things like that. So for me, a lot of life has been about finding the balance between the dark and the light and helping people to realize the patterns they play. Uh, and how to break those negative patterns and move from 
uh, in, inappropriate or ineffective behaviors to, to more appropriate and effective. Yeah, yeah very, very interesting. And then um, as, you, as you were growing up, the, the experiences, the spiritual experiences, um, I mean, you could see auras, you could feel energy. Um, which yeah. Is, uh, yeah. I saw mainly, I, you know, everybody experiences it in a different way. I don't know how you experience it, John, but I personally used to see, or I still do see, and I always have seen um, colors, mm. and I hear voices and things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and when you when you say the voices, um, from angels, from, from yeah, angels, past lives, mm. or messages. You know, sometimes you get a message that somebody's meant to know something or do something. Yeah, um, that will help them on their path if you tell them that. Will yeah. help through the process. And suddenly. It might be the insight that needs to break them through. You know, mm. a lot of people suppress memories, and if you can just pump them in the right moment with the right memory, it can really help release the process and move it forward. Yeah, definitely. And then um, for, for teenagers that um, obviously struggle, <clears throat> you know, going through different things. I mean, myself, I had some um, uh, energetic experiences. I could see things. I could communicate with with other beings. Um, you know, pra practically my whole life, I still do it. I mean, I get messages from from uh, loved ones that have crossed over when I'm doing energy work. Sometimes an angel will come through, or their master healer, and um, you know, obviously I get instruction on what I need to do. But the very important thing that I'd like to touch on as well, besides everything else, because there is a lot to talk about within this um, show, is um, when we when we're doing healing. Um, what, what I do, and it would be interesting to hear how you do that, is um, I allow the body to, to express itself, the, the aura, whether it's the physical, etheric, uh, mental, emotional, astral, causal, and all the different spiritual bodies, will actually express to me in ways, whether it's pictures, sound, or, or, or some way of expressing what exactly. I need to do for the person. Do you work on the same principle? I do work on the same principles. As you say, picture, sounds. Whatever you not need to do, it might be heat, cold, tingling, mm. and it gives you a sense of what you mean to do to help the person move forward through that. Yeah. Uh, I have also studied things like chakra balancing and mm. um, pendulums and body talk and mm. all sorts of counseling and coaching and you know all the normal, yeah. all the stuff that we do. But yeah. at the end of the day, I think the most important thing is your connection with soul and your connection with the client. Mm. It's, you, you've got to let them lead you, you know. Yeah. You don't want to impose your stuff on them. They, you've got to follow them where they're going and what they're doing. Sure, definitely. Um, yeah. And then, and then chakras as well, because I mean, um, on on my on, in my book, in one of my books that I wrote, I spoke about the higher chakras and all of that. Um, but I didn't go into too much detail. But um, I, I mean, the chakra colors, there is a shift in, in obviously the more conscious a person becomes. But also for people to understand that a, a chakra itself, on its own, and it will be interesting to hear what you, how your your take is it, um, has its own energetic grid and has its own energetic chakras, and it connects interdimensionally to to other aspects within the universe. Yes, no, I do experience that, and also. In, in different ways along different path lines of light. That's another aspect to get into. Mm. But for me, I experience it almost as a swirling energy, sometimes uh, blocked, mm. sometimes not swirling, sometimes um, very open and very active. Sometimes there's issues. Uh, it might be, you know, but you've also got to look at the whole aura. Mm. Uh, and what I find fascinating is if you if you look at you know, you talk about the shift of auras of people as they get more enlightened. Mm. And then you might walk into a shopping center mm. and see some of those people, you know, the smokers of the world yeah. and their auras. Mm. And it really is disgusting. <laughs> yeah. That's not a good word. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, in the it's a dirty aura. <laughs> yeah. In the, in the ancient times, it's amazing because in the ancient times, they, they would. Um, uh, smoke. If you're doing a sweat lodge, um, which I've been to, which was really amazing, um, Red Indian sweat lodge, and then at the end you smoke the the um, peace pipe, which they put about 18 or I think 20 different types of tobacco. But that was pure tobacco. I mean, I'm not a smoker, but it was just part of the ritual. So you just have a little bit of a puff and um, just to end it's ceremonial. Mm. 
But um, in those days, there wasn't the toxicity in the chemicals that are put in into cigarettes, so it's, it's different. But um, the, the chemicals that they put in cigarettes and, and the stuff that they, I mean, it's all been proven and, you know, people still carry on smoking, but it is an addiction. Um, that, that adds the clouds, and it's the same thing with drug addiction, adds the clouds and, and the cracks and the, and the funny cocos, oh. as we call it, in the aura. Yeah. yeah so you also see that, huh? I do. And another thing, while we're talking about aura shapes and things,